so welcome back this is another video and this is one two three fourth element of the seven most important elements of writing fiction and here we are where we create the atmosphere this is setting and without this your story is not placed anywhere your story is just a narrative happening anywhere with no space signature or time signature or for that matter space time signature if you're writing a quantum story you see so this is something which actually places your characters where they live their houses their neighborhoods their cities their countries or for that matter their planets or even for that matter their galaxies i would i am really a big fan of science fiction so i'll try bring in a lot of such uh, you know stories to help my teaching you know uh, i mean this is just a recommendation if you haven't yet read isaac asimov please start reading and because as much as these seven elements as much these classes as much as this listening to a person who is uh, working from morning is probably pretty tired right now it will not help it will, the most important thing will help you that whatever i'm saying you have to identify those in other stories which you are reading and that is when you will understand that the how without these seven elements no story can stand and that is when your story writing will become of a certain standard so it is not something that is going to happen very like mathematics the way okay you know 1 plus 1 equals to 2 and that does not change and fortunately language literature they're not very objective things they're subjective things so so if you have a particular formula a copy book formula okay one two three four five my story is ready this doesn't happen in language or literature we have a structure true we follow the structure like the way we did exposition rising action climax falling action resolution that is just a structure but how you fill in how you make your character look like something how your setting looks like something how your plot is very smooth how you bring in your themes which we will talk about how you bring in your points of view we'll talk about we have already talked about that is what will make it something anyway coming back to setting and you can see that there are five things that you need to do almost in every story now where do you want to put your focus on is again depending on your character again depending on your plot what kind of a story you're writing are you writing a drama story are you writing a story where the problem the conflict is human versus self you really need to focus on this how is the mood in the beginning of the story the feeling we, we, we end up writing a lot of things like i'll tell you about this particular poetic device which, which is called neg negative capability where you are actually talking about your own feelings via the inanimate objects around you so i read this story which started of the clouds were sad the ocean was angry the sky was pale and i was sitting empty in the greatest veil on earth so here that person the first person narrator's emotions were shown through these natural objects this this kind of particular use of language is called negative capability and uh, you can use that when you feel like but remember that all of this will be important in all of your story where you want to put more focus is up to you most commonly we find place given a lot of importance a lot of time space words to describe place and again imagine you're writing a murder story so to describe the crime scene the place becomes so vital and with that because it's a murder story i'm going forward with that example you also need to talk about time and now then time is again two prong one the time of the event in the story and at what time did this happen what era did this happen 19th century 20th century 21st century or for that matter 27th century which has not yet come stuff of science fiction 
So, and it is important. You are writing. If you remember when you were in grade eight, you were reading. There was this chapter, and you were reading about dystopian fiction. You read about Big Brother. You read about Leonard Mead. You read about people who were part of science fiction stories, and those stories were, of course, not very believable. And that—that that is why, if you remember, that first dystopian story extract that you read was from 1984. And remember, that book was written in 1947. So that person went. I had 37 years to talk about a world which is full of surveillance, so much so that you feel that someone is always watching you. Big Brother is watching you, and you can see that this writer called George Orwell wrote in 1947 about this. And how far was he from the truth? I don't think much. Today, so many spaces. the school space the 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 roads the the shopping malls the restaurants i mean i mean lord knows maybe one day we will have to write a petition to the government that let us please do not install cameras inside the washrooms who knows so there is a lot of surveillance happening so he was able the writer george orwell was able to you know predict something very deep about our reality he could not have done that saying that okay it is happening in 1947 only nobody would have believed it he really went i had 37 years you might feel 37 years is not enough but just go back 37 years from now just see what was happening in 1982 you will know that the world was not an inch similar of what it is today so it is very important to talk about the era of your story if your story is dealing with really less believable things compared to today then comes the weather and again said that this is something that can go with this also like the example that i said that when the cloud if i say the clouds the cloud was sad or the clouds were sad or, or, the, or the clouds were angry or, or that kind of already gives you some information about the weather so if the clouds are sad so you can think that maybe this is a gray cloud that he's talking about and this brings in a gloominess a glum atmosphere if it's heavily clouded on the other hand when if it if it's raining cats and drops somehow the glum goes away there is a sense of happening there for some people it might be a dampener that you couldn't go out and play for some people it could be something like a new start because rain is the symbol of new beginnings i know new beginning is like saying the same thing again but it's like that because it just it, it brings up that feeling so you know when rain meets the soil it helps the seeds to grow so that is where the new beginning concept comes up so again i'm saying that uh, the point of uh, describing your setting via weather conditions can also help your story uh, very meaningfully sometimes and sometimes just to support what you are doing sometimes you need a certain weather condition to create a certain plot twist you see we'll come to that we'll come to different kind kinds of plots you know like like, like cliffhangers and twisted endings we'll come to that right so and and then and finally the social condition so imagine you are writing a story which is based in india 2000 so before 2000 what should i say uh okay 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 let me give you a more 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 known example so if you think of america 1965 was that year when uh, martin luther was killed and that was a king junior was killed he was assassinated and if you want to talk about that story want to talk about a story which happened in the city of new york in 1965 without giving an idea about the social conditions that how racism had nearly you know engulfed society which is why people like rosa parks martin luther and so many other people came up and tried to say things about what is wrong and what is right about how about make things right so without that notion you will not be able to come up with a problem which is seeped into racism because when i think of 1965 america new york i think that racism can be a very potent topic very potent theme we'll come to theme again uh, after this class basically so and 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 that is where because you're talking about racism in 1965 you need to really talk about social conditions yes when i say 1965 america new york civil not civil war but but this is basically civil war civil uh, 
kind of a civil disobedience movement that went on for a long time and, 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 and it's kind of sad that a lot of people in America did not want the slavery to be abolished even though the emancipation of serfs uh, as, as an act was passed in 1865 which is exactly 100 years before but anyway so again 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 uh, if you think of Harry Potter how Harry was an orphan and he was being you know raised by his uncle and aunt that is a very important social social information that you need to understand what is Harry who is Harry why is Harry and when, when towards the end you you realize that Harry uh, Snape say whereas Snape who always remains the most uh, diabolic character but at, at the end I think like for me after Harry Potter I the most rememberable person for me has been Severus Snape. Like the moment always comes to my mind, it's Severus Snape's face. Uh, and also that the fact that he's dead now, Alan Rickman, kind of makes me sad. But again, so so what I'm saying that, that, that it just gives us so much of data that Harry Potter's parents were into this. Uh, I think they were also part of Hogwarts. Severus Snape might have been their friend. What happened between them is or was very important very influential in what happens in Harry's life. Without Snape, Harry would have snapped, <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, and that is what is the social condition. I'm talking about a very particular one. And, and you know, I, I, like right now, uh, I teach Persepolis to IB yeah. students, and it's a, it's a graphic novel. Some of you know it, and it's about Iran in 1980. To know that situation, to know, to, to, to really appreciate this novel, it is so important to know that how Iran was ruled at that point of time by a certain king and then that king was toppled by a huge revolution, very similar to Jasmine revolution that happened in 2011, starting in Cairo, Egypt. But, but that information is so important to understand that how the whole society wanted to rebel against people who are, who were trying to control them big time or who were spending money of the government without looking after the people, the subject of the country. They were, they were like the king of Iran at one point of time was, he gave out a party which cost him $600 million. And at the same point of time, there were lakhs of people in Iran who did not have a full course meal. I mean, not once in a week. So that's saddening, but without that information, it is so difficult to understand that why were people so angry at the king, correct? So this is something, it becomes very important when you're trying to write a story. And again, I'm telling you, all this seems overwhelmingly difficult if you're trying to do this inside the examination hall in that one hour. This has to be pre-planned. You have to have your 10, 15 plots ready. Trust me, without that, you do not stand a chance to score really high. And now, because it's a 40 mark answer, right, there is a lot of scope to lose marks, you know. A lot of, when there are more marks in offer, there is also a chance that you will lose more marks. Okay, so meet you next time with themes. Thank you.